The man before you is a champion of light. He is part of a conflict between darkness and light that is both ancient and eternal. He is chasing a dangerous quarry, the Herald of Darkness. <laughs> His evil doppelganger, known only as Mr. Scratch. Maybe, but what are you gonna do then? By then, I'll have had my hands on everything you love. spat out from the darkness that surrounds the shores of our reality. He has come to fight a decisive battle in Night Springs. In another life, the man was a writer. He still practices that art, forging weapons of war out of ideas. But the violent currents that brought him here have scattered the pages he has written. The lights of the motel promise safety. The man senses that the solution to his predicament begins there. Somewhere within the Earth, space itself has been pierced, and from dark depths runs a steady flow of monsters. The man recognizes the hand of his evil double in this. He knows he must put an end to this madness. Stay here now. Right? Emma? Emma Sloan? I think you might have something that belongs to me. Really? A typewritten page? Oh, yeah, that's weird. I, I did find a page like that. I don't even know where it came from. It was all this weird stuff about the oil derrick and a satellite. Yes, that's what I'm looking for. Oh, I don't know how you knew I had it, but I, I guess it's yours. Listen, What's this all about? There are these really creepy guys hanging around the oil derricks. There's something really weird about them. They're dangerous. I'm gonna deal with them. Try to stay out of their sight, okay? And stay in the light. They hate the light. Just to be clear, you should know that we haven't actually met before. Sure we have, Mr. Wake. Remember, you stayed at the motel here. No, the guy you're talking about just looks like me, even if he uses my name. He's behind all this trouble. Oh, I thought, um... 
Now that you mention it, I guess your aura looks a lot nicer than his, actually. I'm very sensitive to things like that. There's a bunch of stuff I need to find. The things mentioned on that page? Well, there's a lot of old crap lying around this place. Great, thanks. I think you should be able to find everything, except the satellite, obviously. Are you going to tell me what this is? I don't think that'd go over too well. Why don't you let me be the judge of that? Fine. The page is a formula for rewriting reality. Either I use it to close a strange portal to a place that isn't in our world, or shadowy serial killer monster things keep pouring out of there. Yeah, you were right the first time. You can think what you want about me, but there's still bad guys around. Be careful. Well, you might be nuts, but I've seen the way they move, the way they look. I'll buy that. They're called Taken. They aren't really human. Not anymore. And they're climbing out of the oil well? What, do they have secret headquarters down there, or...? No, that's just where the point of connection is. It's a hole that leads to... Well, it's a really nasty place. That's why I need to close it. And the guy who looks like you opened it, because he was hanging around the oil field before. He gets around, unfortunately. Thanks for helping me. Oh, I wish I thought you were just a nutcase. Actually, I kind of expected you to. Me too. But I feel like this is how it's supposed to go. Isn't that weird? Not really. I get that a lot in my line of work. What do you do anyway? I'm a writer. Obviously. What was that you said about my aura? Oh, I'm very spiritual, you know. I can see auras, but I only use it for healing and helping people. I'm like a wise woman, you know. I give people insight and advice. Look, just because I say crazy things doesn't mean I believe everything. Don't be like that. Maybe you should take a few crystals with you if you're going out there. It might be dangerous. They soothe your energies and focus your mind. It's fantastic. And they help me take out the bad guys? Oh, well, no. Not as such. Yeah, okay. I think I'm... Or I have some wonderfully potent herbal detox suppositories. Yeah, I'm good. I'm good. The Champion of Light recognizes the page he got from the woman. It is a weapon of his own design, custom engineered to destroy the dark portal. If he recreates the conditions of the page, a great power will be unleashed. Well, here you are, about to enjoy another cool Arizona night with me, Eddie Rodman, the host with the boast. Hey, any of you guys remember Old Gods of Asgard? <laughs> Man, I actually saw them twice back in the 70s. I was just a kid then, but my dad worked at this club, and he'd sneak me in to see bands all the time. You know, just talk about an education. Anyway, great band, couple of great albums, solid fan base, and then they kind of dropped off the face of the earth. Well, now, almost four decades later, they're making a comeback. And let me tell you, these boys have seen a lot of road. There's some serious rock and roll veterans, because they weren't too young even back in the day. Well, now I've got Odin and Tor Anderson, two of the original old gods, in the studio with me, along with their manager, Barry Wheeler. Nice to have you guys here. Oh, hey, great to be here, Eddie. Yeah, hey. Hello. Now, boys, let me just come around and say this, all right? Spring chickens, you ain't. <laughs> I mean, you guys, you make the stones look young. <laughs> You're only as old as you feel. <laughs> Who you calling old? <laughs> Now, your last album was 1978's In the Valley of My Shadow. And then you stopped playing all together after that. Why? And, and what made you do a comeback after all this time? Well, <laughs> it was a sad thing. See, the original bass player for Old Gods, Fat Bob Balder, passed away in... Leukemia! Oh, Bob had leukemia, poor bastard. Yeah, after that, we didn't feel like playing no more. Long story short, I ran into these guys up in Washington, and it was obvious to me that they still got it. So I figured, hey, let's make some music, right? And they went for it. Now, Barry, you were a literary agent before this, right? Uh -huh. Ah. Yeah, and you were very successful. You represented Alan Wake, I believe, who disappeared under mysterious... Yeah, yeah, yeah that's... Uh, hey, I just want to talk about old gods tonight. Is that cool? Can we do that? Oh, yeah, sure, sure. Listen, why don't we take a little break, and then later on in the program, we'll hear the new Old God single. Stay tuned, folks. Well, at least Barry landed on his feet. Oh, hell. This isn't going to be good. Is this on? How can you tell? 
I'm sorry, I'm not very good with gadgets. Ah, that's more like it. I'll be right with you. I just gotta do this one thing. I like it quiet. I bet you're wondering why this is happening. Why am I doing all this? Why am I so hell-bent on ruining your life? You're cramping my style. You've got money, fame, everything you could want. But you don't know what to do with it. I do. I'm getting all the things you never had the balls to go for. Having more fun, too. Do you know the real difference between us? I'm not afraid to be the center of attention. This poor slob's just collateral damage, really. I mean, made some information out of him earlier. But this part? This is just for kicks. So quiet. It's a little sad how many problems you can solve with Buckshot. one thing down. Just one more to go. The enemy tears itself in two to avoid the hated light. It becomes weaker and more numerous. Such is the arithmetic of hope. That was just messed up. That's everything. The man has found the battery, but it is empty. It will need to be recharged. Something tells me I'm really gonna need the extra firepower. I need this battery charged. No problem. Here you go. Thanks. Listen. I don't know what's gonna happen exactly when I do this. My memory's a little hazy. I don't even know what that means. All I'm saying is you don't want to come anywhere near the oil field, all right? This thing could get out of hand. In the middle of highly flammable materials. Great. I'll do my best to contain it. Just... please don't turn out to be some kind of crazy terrorist guy, okay? Okay, I'm gonna go now. Wish me luck. Wait a sec, I want to ask you about something first. What did you mean with that my memory's a little hazy thing? I had a pretty rough time coming here. It was like being caught in a tsunami. I blacked out for a while. It's hard to explain. There's a, a barrier of sorts that I had to break through. I was lucky to make it here with my wits as intact as they are. 
So you might have brain damage, you're about to do great things with a magic piece of paper, and you came here from another dimension? No, I'm from New York. I, I was just visiting another dimension. Oh, yeah, okay. My bad. to make some serious changes. got him. You're safe. I need you to tell me what you know about him. The guy who looks like me. He... There was a, there was a party in one of the rooms. It, it was pretty wild. I, um, I'm not sure which room it was in. You didn't attend? I, no, I wasn't there. But it got way out of hand. Anyway, I, I heard that he went to the diner and there was a fight there or something. Maybe you could find out more from there. I, I, I got some keys that you could maybe use. You just happen to have the keys, huh? Fine. I'll take a look. Stay here. Like hell. I'm getting out of here as soon as you leave so I can close up this place and go home. Emma, you really want to stay here in the light. Yeah, thanks for the advice, but I'm not sticking around. Just go already, okay? Are you okay? I guess. Thanks for the help. Were those the... what do you call them? The Taken? What are they? It's complicated. Short version, the darkness can take people over. That's why I had to destroy the oil derrick. Otherwise, they would have overrun the place. Wow, I didn't think you'd actually do it. I mean, I didn't think it'd work. 
That's crazy. Let me just try one more time at the risk of sounding like a broken record. It's bad out there. I don't want you hurt. You should stay put. Yeah, while well, you turn this place into an inferno, run around shooting things up and play some kind of weird games with your psycho evil twin. Don't get me wrong, you're, you're nice for a weirdo. I'm impressed as hell by all of this, but enough is enough. I seriously just want to get out of here, okay? A poltergeist. Its existence is one of rage and hostility and its very presence turns ordinary objects into deadly projectiles. Oh, shit! Traces of violence, a callous midnight snack, a room key left carelessly behind. The man recognizes the enemy's handiwork. I think these are keys for the motel rooms. Satellite and now this? That place might be involved. Thomas Sloan was a believer in a great many things, most of which were entirely fallacious. Emma Sloan, an innocent victim of his dark half, more collateral damage in the ongoing war, damned by forces beyond her control as much as by her own. Michael Farabee, dead, tortured, dressed in clothes that bore the name of a local observatory. A slim lead, but solid enough. It stirs something deep in his mind. He knows where to go now. The observatory, hot on the heels of the Herald of Darkness, the Champion of Light forges on to see the stars. An observatory, a place for a man to witness the magnificence of the universe. But such insights are not what the champion of light is looking for. He has come to find a weapon. Rachel Meadows and 
Wait a moment, it's you! I can't believe you dare show your face around here again. It wasn't me. I just look like him. Are you serious? That's what you're going with? Please! I'm trying to stop him. You saw those shadow things trying to kill me, right? I bet he got along with them just fine. Yes. Yes, he did. All right. Come on in. Thank you. Hey, buddy. I figured I'd take a moment to talk to you. There's a party next door. I'm feeling pretty good right now. A little beer, a little fun, you know? It's nice. Listen, this whole thing between us, it's a little weird for me too, you know? I mean, we don't just look the same, there's a lot we share. I mean, up here, I know you, right? So I was thinking maybe we could... These guys are getting out of control. Look, I feel like we're both victims of circumstance here. And maybe we could make some kind of effort to... Never mind. Just a moment, I'll send the lift down to you. I didn't expect to see anyone here tonight, but I'm relieved to see an actual person. That's assuming this isn't some kind of cruel trick on your part, of course. Doctor, the man who looked like me, what did he want here? There's a strange astronomical event happening right now, something I can't begin to classify, but I think it's disabled our satellite. There's a very peculiar signal that we're receiving. A signal? That's what I'm here for. Well, so was he, but he didn't seem to understand it at all. He got very angry, sabotaged our imaging array, and now we're blind. I believe the event is still going on, but we can't pick it up. Is there something we can do? 
What he broke is essentially just a special camera, but we can't use the telescope without it. There's a replacement in my car. If you can get that to me, we're back in business. Consider it done. Tell me more about the signal. It's almost as if something's being transmitted to Night Springs. It's the strangest thing. It's quite elusive, almost as if it wasn't properly there. I don't know how to describe it. So, what was the signal like? I wish I knew. He appeared before I had a good fix on it. He was very pleasant when I was working, but when I isolated the signal, he suddenly forced me out of the control booth. He said it was none of my business. He seemed to... to change. Somehow, he... He was very smooth and charming before that, but suddenly he became... I'm sorry. I'm not sure I want to talk about it. I have to ask, do you always wear that to work? I was at a party for a local art exhibition. Fascinating works. When I was called away by my assistant, Michael was the first to spot this event. I don't know where he is now, actually. He was supposed to bring us some food, but he never showed up. Tell me about the event. Oh, it's quite fascinating. It looks as if stars were changing, somehow, or shifting positions. It isn't really happening, of course. Most likely it's caused by some kind of atmospheric refraction phenomenon, but I've never seen anything like it. Did he hurt you? No. He didn't quite threaten me exactly, but those shadowy things started to crawl into view, and whatever the signal was, he seemed to be extremely frustrated by it. He just started breaking things and left. I thought it best not to interfere. You were lucky. He's done much worse. Yes. He showed me a knife, and he kept talking. He enjoyed the sound of his own voice. A proper maniac. You really aren't anything like him, are you? Believe me. I try very hard not to be. Good luck, and try to be careful. It's a very expensive part, and we don't have a replacement. Oh dear, that sounded more callous than I intended. Ah, uh, be safe. Found it! Excellent. I'll operate the platform directly below the telescope so you can install the array. Don't worry, it's very easy. automated coolant system. Somebody just interrupted the flow. So now what? Well, you could go and open the secondary coolant flow valves manually. I know it's dangerous there, but, well... I got it! Please come talk to me if you have questions. Is there something I should know about this coolant thing? Oh no, it's quite straightforward. 
The telescope is very heavy, and moving it generates a lot of heat. So do all of the electronics. Overheating could cause damage, so it shuts down automatically if the coolant fluid isn't flowing. And hot electronics generate instrument noise, which we want to eliminate as much as possible. What is this coolant anyway? Is it dangerous? We use liquid nitrogen. It's quite safe. If I can make it to the valves in one piece. Yes, there is that. Good luck. I'm assuming you didn't have this kind of trouble using the telescope earlier, when my double was here. No, it went very smoothly. Until he turned into a nutter. This doppelganger of yours doesn't seem to want anyone else to look at this phenomenon. Honestly, it seems a little pointless to me. There are many eyes on the sky. I'm not sure what we're gonna get once this thing is working again, but I have a hunch. I doubt it has anything to do with outer space, or that anyone else can see it. I think it's a message for me. For you? That seems unlikely. And even if it were a very localized phenomenon, surely it's visible to others in the area. Maybe. But I wouldn't bet on it. There's a reason he came here, and a reason he doesn't want me looking at it. Just remember, you need to release all three valves. It doesn't matter what order you do it in. Doctor, is it working? Just bear with me a moment. Yes, I believe you've got it sorted. It's working again. Nicely done. That sounds like trouble. I don't think they're happy with our success. Look out, they found a way in. signal now. Oh yes, it's coming in loud and clear. It's amazing. I'm not sure what it is yet, let alone where it's coming from, but it's interacting with our system somehow, like it was intended for us. But I don't understand how that could be. Maybe that's just how the story goes. What? Never mind. Is there a way I can hear it, or however this is supposed to work? I think the signal is incomplete somehow, but you should be getting a printout of it now. What do you mean it's incomplete? 
It's almost as if we're only getting a fragment of it. I need the whole thing. This is important. I'm sure it is, but this is all we're getting. Did the man who looks like me get the whole thing? He locked me out of the booth, so I have no way of knowing. But I can tell you that he didn't really seem to understand it. So, what's in the sky? It doesn't make any sense. The stars are just... they're wrong. I thought I'd be able to see something, but it's like I'm looking at a sky that's just... it's not the right sky. But that's impossible. I consider myself a rational man, Doctor. But this isn't a thing you can measure or explain. I I've seen impossible things that have taught me just to roll with some punches. It's either that, or go insane. I find it disturbing that you sound like you're speaking from ample experience. A printout of a signal. It, too, is a weapon created by the Champion of Light. In its words, stirs a new reality. But it is incomplete. And yet, it provides a roadmap for the man to follow. A course that will lead him to a place where he may confront his enemy. The drive-in. Once the site of lurid celluloid fantasies, it's now the site of an art exhibition. And yet, it's the search for closure rather than culture that brings the champion of light here. to go. You know I'll do what you want. Okay. I I love you so much. Did you know that love hurts? Are you gonna hurt me now? Cause you should. Lady, you got darkness on the brain. I, I think I can help you if I can get the lights on in here. You can't turn the power back on. It's not allowed. You said. So... Where shouldn't I go so I don't turn the power back on, accidentally? It's the big building on the other side of the drive-in, but it's locked. Where's the key? Just so that I know to avoid it. It's... it's on the wall next to the cash register. But you can't. You can't. Don't be bad. Hey, no problem. I'm just gonna go do some other stuff. Scout's honor. Mm. Just try to stay calm. I I've seen this kind of thing before. I think you're gonna be okay. Why did I... Why is it so hard to think? You've been touched by darkness. It's... I'm hoping it's not permanent. Remember when you were here before? And you kissed me? And then everything got all dark? That was the best. Listen, this is very important. Where did he... I mean... Where did I go? Can you tell me that? Baby, you don't need to go anywhere. You're here now, and you're in my head. You should be in me. You should touch me again. Not with a ten-foot pole, lady. Hey, just in case there's a part of you in there that's freaking out right now, it's not your fault. I promise I'll do what I can to help you, okay? I... I don't... Please go away. Don't sweat it. I'm just saying that, in case you really need to hear it, I've been there. I... I think there are spiders in my eyes. I think you put them in me. Yeah, I'm just gonna go now. And we're back with old gods of Asgard and their manager, Barry Wheeler. Guys, you're on your comeback tour, and you're playing a lot of your classic material. But you've also got a new single out, right? How'd that come about? Was it hard to go back into the studio after such a long time? Are you kidding me? They were chomping at the bit. They were just itching to stretch those creative muscles. Now, it had been a while because, uh, 
you know, they, they spent a lot of time in, uh... Retirement! We were retired. We were? Yeah! No, 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 no. We were at the lodge, and, uh... We escaped. We were at the retirement, uh... Thing. Retirement thing. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, you know, really, once we got in the studio, things started happening. Now, the music has changed a little bit, and the boys were a little rusty, so it took us a while to find the right gear, but hey, once we got going, whoo, boy, they kicked ass. And it's an awesome song. It's called Balance Slays the Demon, and seriously, I think it's their finest work. And hey, I should know, I produced it. Oh, really? I didn't know you were a producer. Well, this was my first time. I mean, they needed a little bit of guidance, you know what I mean? I mean, don't get me wrong, these guys are the best. But it's the 21st century, man. Things just sound a little different these days. So, you know, I kind of stepped in there, helped them make it sound all cool, kind of jazzed it up. <laughs> that sounds like a challenge. Oh, no, it was really easy, man. I was just, you know, like, hey, give it a little zing, you know? Let's take it to another level so it really rips. Uh, you know, let's just throw some really sweet synths in, like that, you know, just kicked it up a notch, but it's totally old gods. Well, listeners, you can judge for yourselves. Here's Old Gods of Asgard, and Balance Slays the Demon. Oh, yeah. Man has encountered this before. People whose integrity has been suborned by the insidious touch of the darkness. He has experienced it himself, but merciful light burned away the darkness in his brain. Oh look, Mr. Hero's here. You ready to save the day? You're gonna shit yourself when you realize what I've done. Shut up! Okay, I should be able to figure this out.
You have no idea how badly you're screwed. It's gonna be a blast to watch you find out. Don't wanna get hit by those. In the dark, I can see. Ah! No, don't. Oh, it's not. It's you. Did. Did you help me? Looks like you're feeling better now. Yes, I am. Thank you so much. I don't know what happened. There was this guy. Before you say anything, I know I look like him, but I'm not. Don't worry, you just don't feel anything like he does. He was in my head. I feel like I need to take 50 showers. Where is he? That asshole wanted to get into the projector booth. He was talking about fixing things so the sun never comes up. God, it didn't seem that weird when he was saying it. It sounded really good at the time. You weren't yourself. The projector booth. That sounds about right. I need to get in there. I have the access code for the door. Here. Thanks. I'm just glad you showed up now. He said he'd be back after he'd arranged for some security. Do you feel up to telling me what's going on here? We have an art exhibition here, supposed to open tomorrow. I'm the curator. My name's Serena Valdivia. Alan Wegg. Holy shit, it is you. I didn't... I mean, I've seen you on the big screen. I... I know your wife. You know Alice? Wait. Big screen? Yeah, we have a film from her here. What the hell happened to you? Getting back to Alice. Oh, God, yeah, sorry. Uh, it's quite a coincidence that you're here. She made this short film. I mean, she shot it years ago. You're in it. It's a part of the exhibition. I'm in a film? Yeah, it's like... I mean, it's just footage she shot of you at some point. But she turned it into this thing. It's a... Almost like a memorial of sorts. Because, you know... You're supposed to be dead, or something. Uh-huh. How's Alice? Is she all right? She's okay, I guess, all things considered. I know her pretty well. You're really Alan? I can't believe you're here. Nobody knows what happened to you. But there are people who say they've seen you. That wasn't me. He just looks the same. Like, you know. Yeah, but that guy's a lot more slimy. The thought of him makes me... I hate him, but I... There's something about him, this... God, he's so creepy. Anyway, you're not like him. At all. I hope you can stop him. That's the security system? Well, I guess it's just...
The Champion of Light can feel the fragment of the signal in his pocket, the weapon that can change what will be. It's incomplete, but it's all he has. <laughs> You've been up to something, haven't you? Too bad it's not gonna do any good. I'm a better you than you ever will be, and I've got all the time in the world. Everything you've got is going to be mine. Your life. Your wife! <laughs> what are you gonna do about it? The sun's never coming up now. I can keep this up forever! Show yourself! Whatever you say, buddy! <sighs> the rush of darkness is unstoppable. Time itself twists and tears, sweeping the Champion of Light back with its dark currents. Again he enters the world, but now he sees the trap for what it is, a maze that loops back into itself. I'm here again. He sent me back. Birds again. What the hell? I guess all of it really happened. You remember me? Kind of. I felt weird all day, like I could almost remember a dream I had. And then, just before sunset, I remembered the page. Yeah. I'm going to have to go get those things again. Not all of them. I... I went out and got them. Well, most of them. I felt stupid at first, but then it was getting dark, and those... those things started showing up, and one of them made off with the battery. It ran into the railroad tunnel. There was no way I was gonna follow him in there. Sorry. It's good you didn't. You should be careful. I mean, really careful. Yeah, I, I kinda remember something. Something bad happened to me, didn't it? Forget it. It doesn't have to happen again, okay? Just do what I say. Yeah, okay. God, this is too weird. Am I going crazy here? Just go get that battery. Try to stay calm. You're perfectly sane. We're caught in a time loop. That's why this is happening again. I... I believe you. God, I feel like I might just lose it any second now. How come you're not freaking out over this? Because on my personal weird shit meter this just doesn't rate. Look, I know something happened to me before... You're gonna be okay, if you just keep cool, okay? Thanks for getting this stuff for me, it's a big help. I hope so. Are you gonna make everything blow up at the oil field again? I have to. Well, whatever the hell else you might be, at least you're not boring. Okay. So this chick just came up to me and said she's my biggest fan. I know. They all say that, right? When she's giving me the eye, 
So I make a couple of moves, we have a couple of drinks, and then things start happening. But I say I have to go to the bathroom first. Uh-oh, right? She's got no idea. Watch this. This is gonna be priceless. This should be perfectly safe. Now I just need her to charge this up. charge it. Here. Try not to get killed. Okay. I'm gonna take care of this. Try to stay calm. Look, what if I just... What if you stay here with me, please? I'm sorry, but if I don't deal with this, no one else will. Ugh, yeah, I guess. It's just that this is getting really creepy. I believe this is real, but I don't understand any of it. I'm getting scared. I can't believe you're so calm. I get scared, but I've had a lot of time to get used to it. That helps. The guy who looks like me is the reason this is happening. I caught up with him, but he swept me back here. Back in time? Yeah, it's a trap. We'll be doing this forever unless I can break out of it. How are you gonna do that? I'm working on it. I came prepared, but things got kind of scrambled when I arrived. I'm tracking down the things I need. Yeah, well, feel free to climb back into your DeLorean or whatever it is you do. again. Better get ready to run.
be in trouble. Better hurry. Emma! Coming! Do something bad was gonna happen to me? This is not the bad thing! Nothing! Okay, it's safe now. I got a really bad feeling about all of this. I'm gonna need those keys to the diner now. There's a motel key there that I have to get. Oh, hey, you don't have to do that. I have the motel master key. I work for the same company, you know. Um, what's at the motel? Well, there's a dead guy. He's got something I need to get into the Mount Redtooth Observatory. God. That's awful. Hey, um, you wanted to know about the guy who looked like you, didn't you? The last time you said he had a party, and, but you didn't go. I, no, that's not true. I did go. It was really great at first, and, and then I didn't see it myself, but I hear he turned nasty. He hurt a bunch of guys pretty bad, and there was this girl, he, she died. But I didn't hear about that until afterwards. I thought that he was so charming. And then he went to the diner. That's, that's right. I wasn't involved. I wasn't involved with that at all. I don't know what happened. Fine. I need to check out these motel rooms. In the meantime, you stay here, okay? I'm serious. Keep the lights on and stay here. Yeah, okay. You got it. I sure hope you're right about this. You're gonna stay here this time, right? Because the last time I didn't and that thing, whatever it is, happened to me? Yeah. I don't want you to get hurt again. Don't worry, I'm gonna stay put. I don't remember what happened exactly, but I learned my lesson. Good. It doesn't have to happen exactly the same way this time around. You proved that much when you went out and got those things for me. I think you're gonna be okay. Let's hope you're right. Fate haunts Emma Sloan and fills her with dread. This time, she does as she's told. It's not enough to save her. It's said that nobody knows what the future might bring, but for this man, it's no longer entirely true. A weaker man might simply give up, but the champion of light is an expert on destiny. Sometimes the puppet and puppeteer can be one and the same. Mount Redtooth, its top littered with man-made eyes that stare into the endless depths of space. Tonight, the Champion of Light will depend on them to pick out a message from the ether. It's you. How dare you? No, wait. 
It isn't you, is it? I... I suppose you'd better come in. I'll... I I'll unlock the door. Thanks! I know what you're thinking. Evil twin, supernatural powers. But most of the time, I just like to keep things basic. I want you to understand that. Like this. Need to get your hands dirty? No batteries, no moving parts, just physics. That's technology you can depend on. It's a classic. Speaking of classics, you need to be careful with this one, though. If, if the victim suddenly twists, you might end up cutting yourself. It's not really a workhorse, but I'm a sucker for this style. Now this is more like it. You've got slip-resistant grip. Believe me, you really want that traction once you're wrist deep in somebody. The blade's stiff enough so it won't open by accident in your pocket, but it's still really easy to open with just one hand. Now that's a big thing for me. I know what you're thinking. It's too big, too heavy. But sometimes you just need the extra oomph. If you're talking intimidation, this is gonna do the job. Also great for dismemberings and whatnot. You know, the messy jobs. Ah, I can't tell you how many things I've MacGyvered with this stuff. Okay, now, guns. Not a big fan. I mean, how are you supposed to really connect with somebody with a bullet? I want you to understand that. I take pride in what I do. We can't both be worthless hacks, can we? Forgive me, but this feels very strange. It seems like this has all happened before. I have the replacement part for your telescope, Doctor. I... all right. Uh, let's get it installed. with the cooling system. Yes, that's right. I remember. All right, let me think. If they're sabotaging it, they'll be at the primary coolant pipe outside. If you can secure it, you should be ready to pick up the signal. That is why you're here, isn't it? Yes, it is. I'll take care of it. Before you go, if you have the time, I'd appreciate if you came up here and explained a few things. All of this is very strange to me. Hello. I don't quite know what's going on, but I seem to remember having had this encounter before. It's not deja vu, Doctor. This has happened before. We're caught in a time loop. That's utterly insane. How could that be? I can't really explain it. I suppose I could call it magic. I don't believe in magic. Neither do I. But I can't argue with what I've experienced. Listen, what matters now is the signal. The last time we only caught a part of it. I need the rest of it. Whether you believe me or not, you want to look into this as much as I do, right? I... yes. All right. I realize that you have trouble believing this. That's an understatement. I can't deny that what you say resonates with me on some level I don't pretend to understand. But for all I know, I'm simply delusional. But it's not just you. I've experienced the same thing as you. Doesn't that prove something, at least? Maybe. On the other hand, given your appearance, and the fact that you're trying to convince me that I'm not insane, perhaps you're merely a hallucination that accompanies my delusions. You're not having a psychotic episode, Doctor. For what it's worth, I'm a skeptic by nature. I completely understand your reluctance to believe me. There are people caught so deep in their psychosis 
that they retroactively manufacture memories and beliefs that conform to the situation at hand. Sure, but you have to stop second-guessing yourself at some point, if you want to get something done. These beings hate the light, am I correct? You should be able to turn on the lights and secure the area that way. Doctor, can you hear me? I think we're good to go. All right. I'll start looking for the signal. Please, head back. the signal? Yes. I don't think it's quite the same thing we had um, the last time. Still, we're definitely picking it up. Are we getting the complete signal now? I'm afraid not. Take a look at it yourself. I'm printing out a hard copy now. I'd like to ask you a question or two before that, though, if you don't mind. What's on your mind, Doctor? Most people would find these events extremely disturbing, provided that they survive these creatures, that is. You seem to be quite adept at dealing with the situation. Why is that? Yes. I was involved in... it's a complex story. I was in this small town, and a horrible thing from another dimension kidnapped my wife and manipulated me into writing this horror story that came true. I learned to fight it with light, and I managed to contain it and free my wife. But I was trapped in its world. Are you serious? Absolutely. So, I'm used to reality working in strange or even impossible ways. And I fought these things, not exactly like this, but close enough for a good while now. Of course, I have certain advantages. Was there anything else? What did you mean when you said you have advantages? At the risk of sounding like a lunatic, reality is much more fluid than people think. It can be influenced. I didn't take you for a mystic. I'm not. I'm a writer. And under certain conditions, I can, for lack of a better word, rewrite reality. Change things. That's absurd. But it works. Assuming I believe this? Why don't you simply, I don't know, write yourself some superpowers? It's not quite that simple. You need to follow certain laws of drama, I suppose. You need to think about consistency and symbolism. Often what you write isn't anywhere near as important as what you imply. There are things out there that will take advantage of your mistakes. 
you really believe in this? Don't look at me like that. You've experienced some of this yourself. I will gladly admit that something exceedingly strange is going on. But this idea that you're somehow altering reality with your writing is ridiculous. You're essentially saying you're controlling my actions. Leaving aside the rational arguments against this, what gives you the right? Well, it's more like having a destiny. A path you're on. You're not aware of it, but there it is. If somebody changes it, what difference does it make? It's what every writer does. If you write something that affects one of the characters, they don't really know about that. I'm not a character. Are you saying that it's all right to take advantage of someone if they aren't aware of it? Look, all I meant was that if you're genuinely making all your own decisions, and those decisions lead to whatever destiny you have, what practical difference does it make? I suppose that depends on whether our destinies are determined by things like physics and probabilities, or natural reality, which is presumably neutral and impartial, or by some kind of an intelligence. If it's the latter, that intelligence makes choices based on some criteria. If we suffer as a result of those choices, there's a moral and ethical element involved, regardless of whether we're aware of its manipulations. Wouldn't you agree? I... You're taking this very well. I thought you'd be hangry. I suppose I would be if I thought you could actually do this. Another printout. Another signal fragment. The message is still not complete but it's another piece of the weapon he has built against his adversary. Mere words on a piece of paper, but in the right hands, they will hold back the darkness. The last time the man came to the drive-in, it did not end well. He hopes to avoid that fate this time. He hopes that what he has brought with him to this place is enough. Ugh. Serena's probably out of her mind again, but I'm gonna need that key so I can get the power back on. Again. I'm really just here to get the keys so I can get the power back on. You want to hold me down? It's okay. I know you like that. Yeah, I'll just grab the keys. I could be like your wife. Little wifey. Waiting at home for hubby. Or you could be the mailman. Or the neighbor. I'm already married to someone who isn't crazy, thanks. I'm just going to go and get the power back on. Look, I may or may not be back. I have the access code to the booth already, so once the power is on... You should totally come see me. We could have fun. You know. We'll see how it goes. You should sit down or something. Try to stay calm. I don't want to be calm. I want to be nasty. I want to be nasty with you. Yeah, okay. You could do anything you want. You can use my- Let's not even go there. I was hoping that you'd remember more, but I guess that was too much to ask. Are you getting it yet, genius?
want to talk about Alice. Just look at her. She's really beautiful, isn't she? Your wife. Well, our wife, really. <laughs> Just my wife soon. Don't worry. I'm not going to treat her like the others. She's special. If I wanted her dead, she would be. I've been around for a while now. So talented. You haven't seen her new work, of course. Oh, it takes my breath away. Really, she's that good. Oh. Did you know that I've got a wedding ring, too? We're that similar. She's seen me a couple times, you know. I've let her catch glimpses. She thinks she's imagining things, of course. She thinks you're dead. It might as well be. I mean, even if you manage to keep surviving, you'll be in my trap forever. So I'll go to her. It'll be an amazing moment. Oh my God, you're alive. I'll be the good, loving husband for as long as I can stand it. She'll love it. <sighs> and then, one day, somehow, it'll happen. Maybe I'll slip up, she spots something, or maybe she just starts running her mouth. And then, I'll do it. It's gonna be sweet. Ah. <sighs> die, you lose. If you quit, you lose. If you make it to the end of the loop, you still lose. <laughs> Sucker.
champion of light knows that the time itself is about to end. At least for him, he can feel the dead end rushing towards him. But there is time to act. Incomplete or not, he has the weapon. I don't have the whole thing, but maybe it's enough. aren't you? What are you up to? It's a waste of time, buddy. You should just lie down and die. Let me take over. This is the only thing you've got coming to you. From here to eternity. No matter how many times you come back. Time folds back on itself. Again, his senses scream as the very impossibility of what is happening assaults them. But the Champion of Light endures. Each time he gets a little closer, each time another detail falls into place. Now, the trap works against the Herald of Darkness. Holy shit! What are you, the King Hillbilly? Right on cue, bubbling to the surface from untold depths, the horrors come. The emerging monsters do not expect the warm reception that has already been prepared for them.
So one morning I was I was running. It was in the fall. It was about um, six o'clock in the morning. It was the the sun was sun was just coming up. And there's this huge estate right on the Long Island Sound called the Ziegler Estate, and it's 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 monstrous and it has these old iron gates that have these they're spiked very very sharp but it's uh i mean acres and acres of land and so i'm running and i'm listening to uh tosca listening to opera and there's a moment in tosca where uh tosca is about to stab scarpia okay and it's like it's very very dramatic and it's like they're like there's this huge duet and so I'm like, I'm running, I'm running, running, and you can see the breath coming, you know, you see my breath coming, the sun is coming up, and there's this incredible scene happening. And all of a sudden, I come, I, in the distance, I look, I see something that's on the, on the fence. And as I'm running up, I realize it's a deer. And the deer has tried to jump over this fence, like eight feet, eight feet high, tried to jump over the fence. It landed on top of the the fence it caught it in its chest and it slid all the way down so it had opened the the deer from the chest to all the way down its stomach and it was still alive it was flailing absolutely flailing i just and i remember just this music and the thing was running and i i i, I couldn't believe what i was seeing I absolutely couldn't believe what i was seeing and i i i couldn't get at the deer it was on the other side so it's like the idea of like okay well you, you should help the deer you know try to put out his mirror i couldn't get near it and it was huge it was gigantic and so I, I, uh, yeah, and there was like gigantic, gigantic horns. I mean, it was like, it was the, it was a, it was, it was, a, it was a visual I will never, ever, ever forget. And I just remember as I was running and just these, these flock of crows that were like in the trees just flying, it was the most cinematic, frightening thing I've ever seen. I, I, I just stood there. I stood there until it died, you know, and then just started running home. As long as I show up, I guess. for saving me again. I'd hate to die before I'm scheduled to be murdered. I guess I have you to thank for setting everything up at the oil derrick. Yeah, well, I figured that if we were going to go over this again, we might as well try to be smart about it, huh? I appreciate it. You took a big chance doing that. You okay? What do you think? I've died twice. I remember everything pretty clearly now. You said I was gonna be okay. I don't know what happened. Well, it's not your fault. I think one of those, what did you call them? The, the takers? I think they did something to the power and they got me that way. I'm sorry. But I got the keys from the dead guy in that room. And I'm not handing them over until you do something about this. I'm sick of getting killed. Fair enough. You seem calmer now. I tried freaking out. It didn't do much good for me. I guess you get used to the craziest stuff. Good for you. Plus I figured I'd take the edge off, you know? Mm-hmm. Those herbal supplements are pretty good, huh? Oh, yeah. I wanted to try to explain things to you now, since you're calmer, but maybe this isn't the best time after all. Oh, shit. Yeah. Better not get all metaphysical on me now. Seriously, I'm like two sentences away from thinking how we could all be like atoms on God's skin or something. Or figments of somebody's imagination? Um, wow. Uh... I'm just gonna try to chill out and not think about that or, or getting murdered or anything, if you're cool with that. Gotcha.
So I've been thinking about Barry. I don't know what to do about him yet. I mean, I'm not gonna keep him around, that's for sure. Al? Al! Ugh, little parasite. Your best friend. Really? That's the best you can do. I actually kinda like the guy. He's a plucky little butterball. He plays the clown, that's a hard road to take. <laughs> but I don't need him sticking his fat face in my business. <sighs> Did you know he's been hanging out with the sheriff? From that shitty little town? They keep in touch. Barry's about the only guy who insists that you're not dead. How about that? <sighs> I might keep him alive for a while. <laughs> Just to see him go to pieces when I fire his ass. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> Okay. I really don't think they can get to the power now. Thank you. That's a relief. Um, here's the keys that you needed. Thank you. Hey, I have to tell you. At the diner, I went there with him. The guy who looks like you, okay? I know I said that I didn't. Yeah, I figured. Want to talk about what happened at the diner? There was this guy from the observatory, and... He just attacked the poor dude, smashed his face into the tabletop a bunch of times. It was horrible. I... I didn't know that he was gonna do that. I swear. And I just ran. I just left him there. I didn't even try to help. There was nothing you could have done. It's not your fault. Well, he's dead in that motel room now, so excuse me if I feel pretty shitty about it anyway. You shouldn't blame yourself. I just didn't want to get involved. I have this tendency to just drop everything and run. I don't think I'm a bad person, but I... I didn't even call the cops. I'm such a coward. If you'd called the cops, we'd have dead cops. He's not human. Do you understand? It's not your fault. But I could have tried to stop him. Believe me, if you had, you'd be dead. You seem to be doing a little better now. Yeah, I guess it just got easier once I got this thing off my chest. I just feel so guilty about it, especially because I didn't pick up on any of the warning signs. I just really liked hanging out with him, you know? He was smart and charming and funny and hot. The way you could be, I guess. I guess. What's the deal with this guy anyway? He looks like you, he uses your name. Why does he do this stuff? I'm not sure myself. Maybe he's just evil or my dark half. He does a lot of the stuff I'm trying really hard to get away from. Things that just messed up my life. I guess all those murders don't help either. Yeah, I could do without the murders in the end of the world. Listen, I need to get going. Yeah, go. I think I'm good now. I hope. Good luck. If it all goes well, maybe this is the last time we meet like this. God, wouldn't that be great? Just keep those lights on, okay? The fate of countless individuals hangs in the balance, threatened by the machinations of the Herald of Darkness. And yet, for a moment, the Champion of Light breathes a little easier. He has saved one life. For this moment, it is enough. And soon, perhaps, he can put an end to this. Returning to the observatory for what he hopes is the final time, the man feels anticipation and dread in equal measure. Soon, he knows he will have what he needs. 
Hello, I was expecting you. I've already taken care of the imaging array, but you should still look into securing the primary coolant flow. With some luck, you may be able to light the area before these things even show up. We're ready to look into the sky. Right there, Doctor. This is what you look like. Does that bother you? I bet it does. I'm not just wearing your face, you know. It goes a lot deeper than that. There's a lot of you and me. All the best parts. At first, I was just an idea. But they kept telling all those stories about you. You already had that rep. And then you disappeared mysteriously. And then the stories about bad, crazy Alan Wake came true. And here I am. That's the best part, isn't it? When that happens, you can always count on Cauldron Lake. <sighs> I'm just as real as you are. And I'm the improved version. No fears, no doubt, no weaknesses, no self-deception here. I don't let anything drag me down. Uh, 
I know you like I know myself. I know it bothers you that I'm like this, that I use your name, crawl my way into your life, but I only do it because I'm better at being you than you ever were. It. But I wish these things would stop blatantly violating the laws of physics in my observatory. That's just rude. Are you all right? I'll live. I'm glad. I'll send the lift down to you. I remember our previous encounters very clearly now. But technically, if this really is a loop in time, we've never met before. I don't know why our awareness persists, but it's bloody fascinating. You know, I know physicists who would give 15 years of their lives for a chance to experience something like this. I'd imagine that being stalked by horrible axe murderers would curb their enthusiasm a little. Clearly you've never met hardcore physicists. I'm glad you're in such good spirits, but- the Signal! Yes, it's completed! Finally. If all goes well, this should be the last time we go through the loop. You know, I just realized that I don't have any memory of what happens after you leave. What does that mean? I don't think it means anything. If everything goes well, you just keep going. I don't show up here like this again. No more bad guys. Things go back to normal. Let's hope you're right. I'd love the opportunity to look into this in more detail. Looks like you've accepted the situation. I'm a pragmatist. If this is a delusion, at least my first psychotic episode is anything but boring. Really, Mr. Wake, at the end of the day, I'm a scientist. I love mysteries. I love not knowing. Whatever else this might be, it's absolutely fascinating. I wonder how far this reaches. Is everybody in the world experiencing this? Who knows? I think reality is probably pretty fragile right now. Doctor, I can see you're very enthusiastic about this. I'd appreciate a bit of discretion. Are you suggesting that we should suppress this? No. You can do what you like, but I want you to leave me out of it. But surely, with the things you know, the things you've experienced, you can replicate any of these results. We could- Let me be blunt. If you drag me into this, I'll deny everything. I'll lie like my life depended on it. And writers are damn good liars. Word of advice. This is things man was not meant to know territory. You get into this, chances are you'll open up a door into a world of hurt. Believe me, I know. I see. In a strange way, he feels at ease. He is armed with his own words. And when the time comes, they will be enough, or they will not. 
For now, he's content to let the currents take him toward the final confrontation. Once more, we return to the drive-in. If he's aware of the absurdity of arming oneself with a few sentences and standing against a power that can pierce time itself, he doesn't show it. The man has his share of weaknesses, perhaps more, but cowardice is not among them. <laughs> oh, you got yourself a little plan, do you? Never getting out of this wake, never! Don't worry, I'll take care of your wife and your life! think you're doing, but I'll send you right back to the beginning. What? You think whatever it is you're gonna do is gonna make a difference? This will end up just like before!
I've been around for a while now, you know? Well, you've been indisposed, stuck in the darkness. I've been busy. I operate in the shadows. Not always literally, you understand? I'm a little more resilient than those I've taken. But I do my best work in the dark. Ah. And there's so much darkness out there that goes deep. And the things that live in it are fast, big bastards. They don't mind getting a little bit of elbow room. All that chaos and madness, it doesn't really do that much down there. It's like pouring a glass of water into the ocean, right? But up here? Yeah, you can really make an impact. All they need is someone to bring them all the way through. But first, I had to take care of you, you party pooper. You're stuck in an eternal cycle now. The sun's never coming up for you. Everything else? Do my thing. Getting a bit of quality time with Alice. That's a little something for me. And I deserve it. Again, the Champion of Light enters the final trap. The new reality is almost here. All he needs to do is change the details of the scene, push it past the breaking point, and the rest will snap into place. events or merely a dream, a memory or a glimpse of what is to come. One thing is certain. This scene takes place 
in another time and another place far, far away from Night Springs. <laughs>